Now, Schalke. Schalke are a team that has been balmy recently. Up, down, everything in between. Let's rebuild them. And it starts today. Right, the deed has been done. We are in charge. Media prediction of 17th. That kind of tells the story. But look elsewhere. The club history, the stadium. What's going on here? This is Schalke. Schalke have seven Bundesligas. They've got Europa League. They've got five German Cups and a host of other Cups. What has gone wrong? Yeah, like I said, they're a great club. Big club. Stadium's beautiful. Rich history. But recently, man... They even went through a period where they went 30 games without a win. 30, 30, 3 0. Now they've been through a host of managers, honestly. Loads, loads, loads. They're not getting a long time in the job. Months, a couple of games here and there. Everyone's getting sacked. They're back in the Bundesliga now, though. But as you can see, it's not looking good. We've only two wins from 15 games and nine points. Looks like they're going straight back down. At the end of each episode, so every season I do, we're going to see how it compares to the way the game says Schalke will do to see if we're up or down on what they do. Bit of fun at right the end of the episode, but we'll see. So what has led to this fall from grace where it looks like a dodgy deal with a Russian company pulling the money away from that when Ukraine started, COVID, financial problems. In fact, when you start to save, you're looking at a hundred million pound debt. Whose idea was this save? Whose idea was it? Was it yours? So this is a tough, tough challenge, a tough rebuild, but one I can't wait to do. Season one's going to start shortly, but first, here is the goals for the rebuild. So season by season, season one is very simply to survive. You saw the challenge that's ahead of us. The current regime are not doing too great. Can we do better than them? If we do survive, season two, we're going to go for that top half finish. And season three, the big goal, can we get Schalke back into Europe? Now that's going to be easier said than done and I think this is probably a trickier rebuild. Well, it is a trickier rebuild than the Juventus one that we've done already. Now we've got a few other goals of the rebuild too, along with the league positions. So the other goals of this rebuild are the following. Now if anyone's had a little look at Schalke, the reserve team, under-19 team, they have got some really good youth coming through. So my goal is to bring at least five of those through to be really integral parts of the squad by season three. And somehow help the financial situation. Now bringing in the youth players might help that situation. Maybe we'll sell one or two of them on for big money. So here's the first team squad. It's a mixture of experience and the odd loan player thrown in as well. It's not the greatest, I won't lie to you. But to improve it, we're gonna to have to get a bit creative. Reason being, with all the financial problems at the club, we only have a transfer budget of 862,000 and a wage budget of 46,000. So no doubt for this season, there's going to be very few chances coming in. So we need to find some core players. We're going to build a team around for season one. The club seem to have stumbled on a decent left wing back here in Thomas Awujan. Bizarrely, they have him on loan list and transfer list. I'm going to sort that out straight away because he's got good quality on the ball. Corners 17, we're crossing 16. That could be a nice avenue for some goals for us. There looks to be a decent core of hard-working central midfield players. Led by Florian Flick here, only 22 at 6 foot 3, he could be one that goes with us through the three seasons. Alongside him, you've got Tom Krause, who is on loan from Leipzig with a 2.6 million transfer if we avoid relegation. And a player I'm quite excited about is Rodrigo Zalazar. They signed him for 1.3 million. I'm not sure what his best position is. They're saying central midfield, but... He can also play any one of the three attacking roles, attacking midfield roles. I like him. He's only 22. Again, we can build the team around these boys. So we've got some good high energy players in the early to mid 20s I'm excited about. But to score goals, we're going to rely on one man. And he's a little bit older, but I'm quite excited about him. This is Simon Tarod. Yes, he's 34, but he's 6 foot 4. With finishing of 16, heading 17 and jumping, reaching strength and off the ball, he is a fantastic target man. So to get some use out of him, we've got nimble players around him. This could be a great option. Oh, by the way, in the promotion season, he scored 30 goals in 30 appearances. So we might not have the most talented group, but we've got a decent hard working team. So it's time to build a tactic for us to basically survive. We've got an honest hard working squad, so we're going to keep it basic. I'm toying between 4-4-2 and 4-3-3. I think we'll go for an aggressive kind of 4-3-3. This is the type of 4-3-3 I'm going to go for. You can see that they're pretty pretty basic, the roles are. We've got two inside forwards, all coming up with a target forward, a box-to-box -box midfielder, a Carolero defensive midfielder, and wing-backs trying to 
offer some wide support. It's getting pressy, but we're going basic here. I'm going to tweak it as we go. That's just my template to start off with. And when I put the players in there, I um, can see what we've got to work with. In goes a team, and most of those I'm quite happy with. I love the striker Tarod. I think he's going to be class. I enjoy the midfield three. Salazar, I'm not set on this position for him. That might change. I like the wing back as well. The centre backs may cause us a problem. We've got Yoshida there, who's now up in age. He's 33. Came in from Sampdoria via Southampton. So we might need a centre back if we can. I do think we need a wing back. I'm not overly impressed with what we've got. We've got some decent ones, but I just think we need something else. And I'd like a different option out wide. I'm not set on two inside forwards. Some games I might like to go old school and use a winger to get the balls in to Tarod. Now the next option is to go proper old school, wing play, tactical style, we'll tweak that a bit and go 4-4-2. All I've got in my head is the big man up front, 6 foot 4 and the fact that I know we're going to struggle, so why overcomplicate things? A mixture of the 4-4-2 and the 4-3-3. As far as transfers go, the previous regime have had an interesting time. They spent 6.5 million and have brought in 17. There's an absolute load of players who've came in. So getting team cohesion is going to be fun. But we brought two plays in ourselves, and we went to the Premier League to find them. In real life, making headlines at the minute, Crescencio Somerville comes in on the wing, on loan for the season, no fee paid. And joining him also from Leeds is Cody Drama, on loan with a view to a 5 million move at the end of the season, if we can afford him. I like him, two-footed as well. I'm going to look to try and get another signing in, but it's in August now, so we might struggle a bit. But like I said at the start, the development centre at Schalke, there's some great prospects coming through. They won't be ready this season, but season two and definitely season three, we're going to get them involved. I'm going to put a few of them in the squad now to get them used to the team. Coming into the first team squad is Keke Top, a 6 foot 4, 18 year old striker with great potential. Sidi Sane can play either wing. I can see him being a big prospect. He's only 19. He'll be a bench player first. 21-year-old Leo Grelm, centre-half from Austria. Looks good, needs a bit of work, but definitely a squad player. 19-year-old Kareem Kalahanoglu will be back up at left wing back. And in a couple of years' time, he might be number one choice. And believe me, there's a rake of others in the 17, 18-year-old bracket. And by season three, we're going to have some decent players for this squad. We couldn't have asked for a better pre-season. We won every match scoring a heap of goals, including a nine-goal win in the first round of the Pokal. So after 10 matches, things are going worryingly well, you know. We are sixth in the league. We've won five, we've lost four, so it's a bit like that, but I'm already absolutely delighted. We've got more points than they have in real life. Tactic-wise, I chipped away at the 4 3 3 and we've been playing this. We've got Zalazar as a really attacking box-to-box -box midfielder. If I click on him there, you can see he's got loads of aggressive player instructions, whilst the other guys are a bit more defensive. 4-4-2 we used in pre-season. We do refer to it now and again in match, but it can be a bit scary. We lost to Bayern at home through two corners near the World Cup break. And the loss to Mines as well set us back a little bit. Back from the World Cup break, 21st of January. We're sitting 10th, quite happy with that, ready to attack the rest of the season. In January, we bought in Yassine Adli on loan from AC Milan to play in that central midfield zone. By the way, up front to road, 12 goals in 11 matches. The World Cup absolutely killed our momentum and we ended up losing seven in a row. After some changes to the tactic, we got an absolutely fantastic result against Dortmund of all teams in the big derby. We outplayed them, got a great result on the counter. We were in the middle of a good little run now. We'd started to change the tactic and go a bit more creative preparation for next season. In fact, it was a remix of the Papa Shango tactic and we just unleashed Salazar into the inside forward role and he was absolutely fantastic in there. Spent the most of the season in central midfield when we moved him out wide, his last five games, 7.58, three goals, two assists. That's going to be his new position. With four games to go, unbelievably, we sat seventh. We're like two seasons ahead of schedule here, but every team has a game in hand over us, and if they win, we drop back down to 11th. The other problem is our run-in. We've got Mainz away, Bayern away, Frankfurt at home, and Leipzig away. It couldn't be tougher. I couldn't be happier though, we gave Bayern, away from home, an almighty scare. Tarot put us in front after 6 minutes, and then after 8 minutes, Larson with this, we're 2-0 up. Obviously Bayern came right back at us, and this massive error, oh, it's 2-2. In the 60th minute we went ahead though, Larson capitalising, we're 3-2 up. Absolute heartbreak, it's the 91st minute, we're in injury time, Gnabry goes down the left, Davis gets it in, but we still draw 3-3 away to Bayern. 
A really good 1-1 away draw to Mainz followed. And then this game against Leipzig. Now bear with me because I'm going to speed this up because I'm going to need to. It's the 90th minute, I've slowed it down. I think you can guess what happens. We lose 5-4, damn it. So the season finishes and we finish in 11th. We were predicted to finish in the bottom three, so we've done a decent job there. At one point, flirting with Europe. When safety was assured, I experimented a bit with a tactic and we're gonna go with something like this next season. It's a bit more expressive, a bit more adventurous, considered a lot of goals to the big teams, but it gave them something to think about as well. So that's what we're gonna base next season on. I've started to do my technique of removing players who won't be there next season. So we definitely need a couple of center backs and probably a midfielder as well. We've got the backup through to road through the youth team. So a lot of my backups that you can see down here from positions one to six are all from the youth team. And what I'm really excited about is this young kid, Asan Cuadrado, we're gonna call him. Quadrigo, Triago, you get the picture. But look at the attributes as we focus on him again. That is decent. His flares up there, his long shots, he's going to be a great baller and he's only 17. One other one I want to focus on is the keeper. I brought him in near the end of the season, Luca Podlek. He won't be my starting keeper next season, but he might put pressure on whoever we do bring in. He's nearly there, he's nearly there. He's already valued high. He's six foot six, 18 years old. He's going to be a great keeper. And remember, we need to rely on you because if you look at the transfer budget, we're at a million pounds with a wage budget of 6,000. Next season, it says a big fat zero. And this is where I need your help. If you've played a season already, who's available for free on contracts that have run out? Because that's the market we're going to be in. That and loans is about where we're going to be. And we're going to rely on the youth team as well. Now, I promise at the start, we're going to compare what we did to what the AI do in a full season with the original manager. Do they do better than us? I'll leave you with what they did. Checking in after 15 games, it is scarily close to real life. Look at that, Schalke, 15th with only 11 points from only two wins. Manager Thomas Reese is still in the job, however. Let's see how they go to the end of the season. Three days later. Here at the end of the season, oh dear, it didn't go very well for Schalke, did it? They finished relegated in 17th, so it looks like we did a blooming good job, you know. They also sacked the manager and replaced him with Domenico Tedesco, who returns to Schalke after being there before. He joined back in January 25th. Couldn't stop him from getting relegated though. Down the go. So join me for season two when we'll have a whole host of new players and let's see if we can get Schalke higher up that table. <laughs>